At a point in time in history, not too long ago, in places like the United States, South Africa, Nazi Germany, it was forbidding that people of different ethnicities or races should come together as one. Interracial marriages is what we're talking about today on Blue Room Banters, certified cool by Premier Cool Soap. I am Oscar Onyeson. And after the break, I'll meet some gentlemen who will shed more light on this topic and give us their experiences with interracial marriages. Stick around. Great to have you back. It's Blue Room Banters. We're talking interracial marriages today. And I have uh, some gentlemen who, who have experience in this and some who will shed more light into this. I have a family life practitioner, Tony. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. Uh, entrepreneur, model, a TikTok sensation, uh, a general hustler, a.k.a. hustler, a.k.a. businessman, and an ex-Big Brother Nigeria housemate. We have Ni also here with us. Thank you for having me. Not forgetting that he's six foot six. <laughs> uh, and of course, last but not the least, is a broadcast journalist and a model uh, when he's not too busy on the radio. Benga, great to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. So interracial marriages is what is on the table. And this is a topic that a couple of maybe years and centuries ago, it was unheard of. But now we live in a time where things are a bit more liberals. Now, I know Ni, you're married to an Israeli. Yes, of course. You have a boy. Yes, he's three years old. Uh, that, that story I'm going to hear. And of course, uh, Benga uh, was married to uh, a woman from Malaysia. Yes. And you also have a boy. I have a 10 year old son. A 10 year old son. Now, Tony is married to a Nigerian, so it doesn't really count as <laughs> <laughs> interracial. But I'm sure in your, in your line of work, you've come across this. So, what is the, and I'm throwing this to, to the guys who have experience in this. I mean, we heard jokes like, oh, have you, have you dated all the Nigerian women? You couldn't find a Nigerian mm. woman, you know. But what is that thing that lets you, the light bulb that just says, you know what, this is the woman for me. I don't really care where she's from, what her background is. What is that thing? Well, um, for me, I don't think it's one thing exactly. Because for you to get to that certain level, you have to ascertain some certain level of openness. Yeah. Then you accept whatever is coming to the table. Mm. You also accepting that you have to let go of some things where you're coming from, like like your Nigerian ex girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you date a lot of of um, of Nigerian women before? Yes, I did. Um, I think you know if if I'm to count my exes, you know I should pass twenty only. Well, that's, 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 a, that's a lot for me at some point. You know? um, so yeah, I had that experience mm. before actually meeting my wife now. What about you, Benga? What was your experience you know, before you, you met your Okay, um, I was doing the mixes. Okay. I went out, I, I dated a girl that was mixed Romanian and Hausa. Wow, you're I actually exotic. Visited, <laughs> you're I exotic. visited Romania. I, I did one, uh, I, I dated a girl that was half Japanese and half Nigerian. Okay. And then when I traveled to university, I saw all this variety. It's not like <laughs> I set out to, uh, to date a foreigner or someone mm. exotic. It's just, you don't plan who you fall in love with. And I'm not just speaking for myself. So two of my siblings yeah. are married to Germans. And then I have a, another sibling that is married to a Welsh woman. So it's a very... Uh, so tell me about your mom and dad, because I think this thing started from yeah. somewhere. <laughs> so my mom is from Togo. My okay. dad is from Nigeria. So that was the first you know, West African mix. Mix. And then you now <laughs> took it to the next level, you know, like Malaysia, Japan. Anyway, that, that's interesting. Tony, what about you? What's been your experience with, with dating and then getting married to, to a Nigerian woman? Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, Your wife I, is watching, so be careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't only get married to a Nigerian Yoruba per se. Yeah. I've only dated just one girl. Oh. Wow. You understand? So... Um, when we are talking about that experience, sort of, I'm quite limited. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. You need to get his number. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say no. that. I was, I was actually going to go a step further and say, in he your is, line of he's work... He's a boss. A, <laughs> <laughs> in, in your line of work as a family life practitioner, is it wrong to say that a lot of people tend to want to stay within what they're familiar with because they're not open to change? 
Would that be a major factor? Um, you see, I found out that irrespective of where you marry from, mm. the same issues, the same challenges happens. Mm. I've seen people that marry their next door neighbor. Wow. They were raised together mm. in the same neighborhood for 18 years, and their marriage didn't last four years. Mm. Mm. These are things we encounter. Because you see people, they are coming together to get married. They have come for private counseling. Yeah. And two months down the line, you are asking the wife, why are you getting married to this guy? And she's telling you, that, well, to give him an easy life, to prepare his food when he wants to go to the office in the morning and mm. you know things like and you are wondering and she's planning to get married in two months and the guy when you're asking him why are you getting married to this lady he's telling you that um well uh, i i like her the way she speaks mm. you, you understand and you are wondering and this is somebody who is 33 years 33 years old yeah. so if you do not get the basics right irrespective of who you marry you are still going to mess up yourself dating and for every person you date you're one step closer to that person that you will end up being with because you know not what to take yes. you know what you don't like yes which is why i respect you so much just you mm. the, the first date the first woman that that that's solid but with me yeah. and i want to find out what has been your learnings until you you arrived at this woman there are different things that um, you understand from each woman to, if I'm to take myself as an example, my yeah. growth to where I am right now. Um, I've learned that it's not about the background or the where you're from, irrespective of you know, uh, interracial or not interracial. It's mm. about the person involved, the beliefs that the person carries. So um, my situation was, I just left a bad relationship, you know, a toxic one, when I met my wife. And when I met my wife, I was on the verge of becoming a bad boy because I left all those, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be a bad boy anymore. <laughs> and um, it was a two years relationship. Wow. The first year was beautiful. The second year was a disaster. And this was a, uh, a, a woman from, Ni from Nigeria? She wasn't from Nigeria. She was from Zambia. Zambia, okay. Yeah. I just told myself that I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to put myself out there, have fun and that. So I met my wife and I met her at a convenience store that she was managing at the time. Mm. I normally get my products from there. And um, yeah, I saw a pretty fine, you know, white looking mm. lady. Mm. And I was familiar with the store, wanted to get to know her. Then it was a situation of whereby the same old story, the numbers didn't go through. To cut it short, I wasn't going to approach her in a certain way of relationship mm. yeah i was just going to you know be my friend. normal me and mm. yeah friend mm. let's catch crews and stuff but you know she had her own opinion because if you ask her now she <laughs> said i knew you were the one i don't know how she knows that <laughs> so what i learned was irrespective of you meeting anybody mm. you have to learn the person's core value if it matches your your, your core values and beliefs yeah and you have to keep growing to the point whereby you would say this is this is what this is where we were when we started mm -hmm. and this is, this is where, where we've we gotten to so we keep learning and unlearning things i learned a lot from my past 20 relationships of being a young man to mm -hmm. you know going to become a man and i'm still learning in my marriage that i can tell you for sure Wait, Benga, how how yeah. how would you or what advice would you give a young man out there where you need to separate the excitement of being with another woman from the reality of the responsibilities ahead. Because I think somewhere that, that line comes in where you're like, oh, she's a Chinese yes, woman, exactly. Malaysian yeah, woman. Let me, let me hit that and play move the on. Field. But to marry is a different ballgame. So what would, you, what would you say to someone? How do you separate the two? I would like to start off by um, acknowledging what Nihi said about your core values have to match. Mm. There's a time, I mean, I've been there, I've done that. In university, I was a rock star. 
So <laughs> <laughs> United Nations, every like everything you can think of uh, legally. Um, <laughs> but there comes a time when you have to shed all of that. Mm. There's, there are more important things in life. You need to understand that, look, all these girls uh, will move on. They yeah. will become CEOs, they will become something. You can't keep saying, I'm a bad boy, I want to date 100 girls, and all of that. At the, at the end of the day, you're going to start a family of yours. So the sooner uh, you wake up to your responsibilities and become a man, uh, the better for you. And it's not all rosy and it's not mushy. Mm. Uh, it's, life is all about ups and downs. But never put a gun to someone's head to get married. Don't get married because of pressure or your friends are getting married. We think our kids, because it's a thing now, I want to have mixed race babies. Yeah. You know, they're <laughs> cute, but pampers, and I mean, when bills, when you have to buy the diapers. bills are not interracial. Fees, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not cute at all. They're not interracial. So, they're and, and it will be very irresponsible of you to bring children into this world when you're not prepared. Tony, yeah. let, me, let me throw this at you before the break. If, if you had a chance to be with another woman, like to date, with everything you know now, would you want to stick to your environment, your ethnicity, your religion, or would you be willing to explore based on all you know now and what you've heard from these guys? <laughs> um, I have discovered that what makes marriage work is not where anybody is, is from. Mm. The most important thing is that that person is a human being and needs to be treated like a human being. Every marriage, both interracial or non, goes through challenges. There is no perfect relationship. There is no perfect marriage anywhere. If there is any relationship you see that looks like it's perfect, mm. everything is OK, it's nothing short of hypocrisy and deceit. Mm. That's just it. So every relationship goes through its own challenges. So I do not believe that any relationship will go wrong because they had inter-tribal or interracial marriage yes, no because the is the same principle exactly. that you will apply mm. to somebody who is married from his or her family or tribe that are going to use in addressing the challenges of those people that are from so, so it's subjective to that relationship not yeah it's I, not I, a general I have a story rule. I have a yeah. story for you guys and I mean I love what I'm hearing but I, I would like to hear what you have to say about this um, we'll be back on blue room Banter is certified cool by Premier Cool. Interesting discussion on interracial marriages. Stick around. Great to have you back. Interracial marriages is what we're talking about on Blue Room Banters, certified cool by Premier Cool Soap. Uh, Tony Ni and Benga are here, and, and it's, been, it's been interesting. But I'm going to crank it up a notch. Now, here's the story, guys. Okay. Um, you have uh, a boy, Nigerian boy, goes uh, outside the country, a European country. He meets a girl, and they fall in love. He understands his family, so he knows mm. this girl will not fit in properly at home. So they get married secretly. And after the end of his duration of his course, um, he has to come home. So he's afraid to come back and introduce this newfound love of his to his family. There's the issue of societal pressure, family pressure, acceptance. All of this happening, and it has nothing to do with the love he has for her. Mm. It's about every other person outside their circle. Yeah. What would you tell him me? I mean, so, okay. Oh, okay, who wants to take it? So, as a result of that, he got married secretly. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you see? I, I, I know what's coming. <laughs> There's every tendency that that marriage may not last. You know why? I, do, why? I don't agree with you. Well, let, let me hear. No, 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 no. no. Let, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Hmm. Okay. Normally, you are telling me that you are matured enough to get married. Hmm. You have what it takes to face the challenges. Hmm. So if you could not even get to the point to face your parents and tell them mm. you are so much engrossed with fear and, you know, the impact of what people would say. And mm. because of that, you now took the decision to get married. 
uh, does, question that maturity. Does the poor understands his family? He does, he yes, he understands his family. But we are talking about a man here. So let's even have, he, tell, he calls the family, mom, dad, I'm getting married to Susan from Egypt or Malaysia, wherever. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, it can't happen. What do you want him to do? He will press for that. And if nothing positive happens, yeah. whatever action he now takes after that, he's justified. Let me, let they me, have not even disagreed let me switch yet. To, let me switch I just to want me. to say okay. something. Yeah. You find out that the people who make such decisions, both from the, the, the girl and the guy, mm. they tend to keep their marriage more intact because of obstacles because of the obstacles or because of what they've done mm. and what people are going to say the pressure they are going to say they would always work out things in their marriage no matter the circumstances so are you saying he should have he should have spoken to the parents you know whatever ways mm. but the fact that he made that decision there's a reason why he made that decision you get people who want to save the whole stress of what might not be or what might, they might say. say. I see differently. What, what makes you I see an adult is taking, taking responsibility for your actions. Because yeah. what, so what, yeah, go on, I maybe. would advise him, look, you're a young man. Your dad can't beat you. What's the worst that can happen? He will disown you. Your dad will not live forever. I'm not saying we shouldn't mm. honor our parents, but take responsibility. Take charge. Own it. Dad, I love this girl. I want to spend the rest of my life with her. There's nothing wrong with her religion. So, nothing, so it's the responsible thing. Is it's a responsible thing to do to get your family involved. But the question yeah. now is, and I'm throwing this open, and I think this is more to Nia and Benga. <laughs> How important is the acceptance of your family, your mother, father, whatever, um, in your decision to say this is the woman I want to be with? How important is it? Take this from me. Um, a girl's decision is the most valued decision in when it comes to marriage. Mm. So whatever the parents are going to say, it's still the girl that makes the final decision. So how important would be, I think, zero to none. Mm. If she's willing to get married to that guy, irrespective of where he's from or his skin tone, then it happens. Mm. Then if you start listening to your parents or your family members, I don't think that marriage would happen. What about it's you? very, very important, and um, I would like to share my example here. My son's name is Bolu Atife. You know when it's Bolu Atife, you know what it means. Mm. And, uh, the way I mean, God wants it. Yes. So I was in university. I just finished my uh, undergrad. And then I called my dad. Uh, no, I called my sister. It's my sister I called First. when I'm in trouble. <laughs> and this is what's going on. Uh, she's pregnant. So I called my dad and um, I told him what I've done. Okay, he said, you're an adult, you're a man, take charge, take responsibility, do what you have to do, you have my blessing. So I guess it's understanding the family you're in. in. Wait, your dad and wasn't that, upset? Like he wasn't like No, he wasn't, he never, he wasn't. My I think dad he deserves my, a shout out. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to you, pops. <laughs> my dad is one of the coolest dads ever, ever, ever. So it's, um, it helps you mm. as an individual. So you're not worrying about that part. Your focus is making this marriage work and providing the best life possible for your child. Now, Gwenga, now, don't, don't turn your neck, but the look that Tony is giving you, if he was your dad, <laughs> Tony, <laughs> what would you say if your son called you and said, I got another woman from another tribe, ethnicity, pregnant? What would be your reaction? I'll give him my blessing. Okay. I would raise an eyebrow at it because I have come to discover that when other indices are in place, mm. nothing matters anymore. Well said, so chop, chop, knuckle. Um, <laughs> too bad you're you too see? young to be my stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, um, in as much as the parental consent is very important, mm. But you see, you get to a point whereby you have to call their bluff. Because some parents can be unnecessarily petty about mm. your choice. Mm. Mm. I have seen people who stood against the marriage of their children because one is from one particular clan in Iboland Ibol and another one is from... The and I'm like, what is wrong with us?
Let me use my story. Even though it's, it doesn't really fit into this topic, uh, I'm from Ondo State, and my wife is Ijebu. Right from when we were young, our parents have been telling us, no, none of you must marry Ijebu. None of you must marry Ijebu. So for those who don't know, what was the, the, the conflict between Ondo and Ijebu? Um, they said that um, Ijebu, especially those ones from Egba that uh, they don't normally stay in a husband's house, they are fetish, you know, mm. things like that. They don't have, uh, you know, they don't have manners and things like that. They are wayward. So they, they are wayward. <laughs> then my, my wife too, on her part, her father has been telling them in their family mm. that none of you should marry on those states. Their own was even worse because they, they, <laughs> they, they, they had an auntie that married from Ondo State and the marriage went sour. Well, they have so, an example. They yeah. have an I, example. So I discussed with my wife, I said, we have to pull this through mm -hmm. together. And, you know, I just showed up. The moment I showed up, my father couldn't say a word. He could not say, you can imagine somebody has been telling you from age seven mm -hmm. that you shouldn't marry Ijebu. And of all you understand, time. and like two decades <laughs> yes. after that, you now came back to tell him that you are getting married to an Ijebu lady. He couldn't just say a word. Yeah, like for my, for my own story, yeah? Yeah, I was going to go to you and say, what, what was your experience? You know, my father has an allergy. Hmm. You know, he, he told me that, son, um, <laughs> when it's time, just make sure she's Muslim, you know? Mm. Oh. I said, okay. I didn't say anything. My mom said, you know what, don't worry, leave that Muslim thing. Let that just be your basha. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And then, my situation was actually, we got pregnant first, before any other thing happened. Hmm. And I was like, ah, Dad, you know what, I found love. Oh, he said, oh, okay, that's good. And I spoke to my mom because I was more closer to my mom. Hmm. And she was like, ah, so okay, ah, that's good though. So which uh, of the she or more do Wahala. And I told her that no, 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 you know, she's from Israel. Ha, ah, which one is Israel again? <laughs> she, she's a Yoruba girl that is uh, Israeli or you know, <laughs> only Israel passport. I said, no, mom, relax. It's totally different. This is what it is. So um, it took a while for them to understand what i was trying to say mm. I'm, I'm trying to tell you that your son is happy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. irrespective of yeah where she's from mm -hmm. i would have gotten a yoruba girl and maybe i wouldn't have been happy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my dad and mom they had no choice than to say you know what i'm happy for you you're our son and if you're happy then we are happy and this is our blessings what are the challenges it's that you have faced in terms of changing <laughs> cultures learning new things on learning well, the challenge is it's too much, you know, to even the tone, the mm. way you speak, the way you put your words, you know. So for me, I had to like even teach my wife that you saying uh, um, that's, that's foolish. What you just did now, it's foolish. foolish. I had to make her understand that foolish is like an insult mm. to me where I'm from. But she's also making me understand that, no, but it's really actually foolish. foolish. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yeah, I so get that. So the, the balance to interracial relationship, it takes a lot of patience and learning and understanding. Mm. So here's my question, guys. Is there a bit of hypocrisy when it comes to the issue of interracial marriages where people decide to take what they want to take and leave what they want to leave, all in the pursuit of happiness. I wouldn't call it hypocrisy. I'll say getting the best of both worlds. Like I enjoy my lake cuisine uh, now, <laughs> and I, I, I mean, you explore, you learn yeah. uh, good things about culture. It's uh, reaching the middle ground. Exactly. And at the same day, we are all human beings. What is offensive to somebody in mm -hmm. if you're on, if you're somebody that is not principled in Japan? you are the same thing as somebody that is not principled in Nigeria. So mm. it's finding human beings with values, having a common ground and respecting yourselves at the end of the day because you're human beings at the end. So parting words to, to, to anyone watching who wants or is considering interracial marriage <laughs> and those who are in it right now. Well, for me, I would say um, look at it as something that 
it's like you just getting another Nigerian girl. There's nothing different about it. You have to put in the work, learn about the person, learn about their food, their culture, and if it's religion, their religion as well. Mm. Okay. Yeah, be open and let love be the foundation. Love and respect uh, in any relationship, regardless of it being interracial or not. And be open-minded. Please don't force your jollof rice and amala mm -hmm. down a throat. <laughs> There's, have middle grounds. Be open to learning and mm -hmm. unlearning. Yeah. Sorry? Understand yourself. Yeah. Know what you are going into. Know what you can take. Know what you cannot take. Know what you can adjust to and know what you can't adjust to. If you know that you can't stand your wife, say hi to your mom. Oh, you are foolish. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know you can't adjust yourself, you can't mm. cope with it. There is no need to bother anybody's daughter to go into interracial marriage. Just stay with your Ikiti or Igbo or how some Ikiti girl. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and by Brazil. Exactly. <laughs> well, there, there you have it, guys. Interracial marriages is. is um, it's one of those topics that you, you need to dissect and, and walk backwards. And when you look at the word interracial marriage, there's the marriage part. And like any marriage, it's built on a very strong foundation of love, trust, respect for each other, sacrifice, and compromise. And once you can get past that, any other challenges, no matter what it's called, um, should, should be a breeze in the park as long as both of you are on the same page. It's about you and your partner. And uh, I think that's what counts, and that is what matters. Any other thing, just semantics and uh, words being thrown around. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on this Blue Room Banters. It has been quite exciting. It's certified cool by Premier Cool Soap. I'm Oscar Onyisa. I'll catch you on the next episode. Be safe. <laughs>